What's up everyone for the one attached you here you know what it is thank you very much for tuning in to tonight's live streams we're probably going to be doing multiple live streams tonight for those of you tuning in uh with playing pokemon magic card jumped after we have completed pokemon quest for the day it is sunday night and we are getting into pokemon quest it has been probably about two to three weeks since i've played pokemon quest so a lot of the stuff that we're going to witness today gonna be Gonna be interesting because I really have not played this game in about three weeks. And the main reason being is um, Pokemon had to take a back seat to World of Warcraft Battle for Azeroth. But we're back at it again. Um, we've got a Shelter that is gonna be our fresh new Pokemon with that withdraw ability. And this was the O Paint Hank that we currently still use today. But it is no longer a Shelter, it is now a Cloister. I'm just basically going around my base camp, checking to making sure things are going well. I believe the reason why I have nothing getting cooked at the moment is because I have no ingredients. So, last that I recall, I was farming ingredients. So bear with me. We're going to be doing a lot of actual solo content videos within this episode. Um, basically explaining to you guys a lot of things that go on in this game. And um, I'm just here to go ahead and recap myself and make sure I remember where everything is that we left off on. So bear with me here. We're going to go through all of our settings, make sure everything is good to go, and we will continue from there. Questing, I believe I've got four. Yes, it's, uh, okay, Expedition 7, 8, 9, and 10. Uh, challenges are just challenges. Those are difficult challenges to do, actually. There's just non-stop challenge after challenge. Pokedex, have I hit 55 yet? No, I haven't even hit 50, so never mind. Edit team, if I recall, I was using Flareon and Pikachu because I was refarming content. And that is true, that is the case. I do have a Machop, a Rapidash, and a Shelter. Is there anything, I believe I was trying to train Flareon to... Did Flareon need to learn a move? Flareon knew Flareon. Flamethrower. Okay, I gotta check out what Flareon knows real quick. I know that wasn't Flareon's moveset, by the way. Um, Power Charms. I want to see what Flareon knew. It knew knows Flamethrower. I was able to train that. Okay, Takedown. I wanted to get rid of Takedown. Got it. I already remember what we're going through. Uh, let's go ahead and do some training then. I do, again, I'm using Flareon always. I've told myself since episode one I will never not fight with Eevee, aka now Flareon. I am currently using Pikachu just to get it some XP and also get into some easy farming. I don't think we're going to get too much XP uh, boost from this. It's 42. Okay, Cloyster can get 100. And I get 100 from the shelter because it's the success rate of uh, being, what's it called, water as well as being its uh, lower evolution form. Um, how much do I get? For, is it higher than 42? It is 48. It's not worth it. However, using Shelter into Cloyster is always worth it for the movesets. So let me go ahead and check out the boy Cloyster. Uh, Cloyster knows Withdraw, which is the main move. I believe it knows Bubble, and I kind of want to change Bubble. Yes, okay, so it does know Bubble and Withdraw. I'm going to go ahead and really quickly here put you guys down on my desk. And I'm going to go ahead and open up a browser on my computer. Check out the movesets that uh, your boy Cloyster can learn. Cloyster, move, I know this is loud. Movesets, quest. Uh, Pokemon Quest, Wiki Guide, Perfecto. Let's go ahead and check out uh, potential moves that Cloyster can be taught. Barrier, Ice Beam, Icicle, Crash, Icy Wind, Supersonic, Rock Blast, and Spikes. Um, alright, so I would like either Ice Beam, and that's pretty much it. Spikes actually could be lit, but let's go ahead and check this out. I'm gonna go ahead and throw in, Bubble's just kind of pointless. It doesn't do much damage, and, um, that's pretty much it. It just really doesn't do anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit up Cloyster with some training. 
Actually, you know what? I'm going to save this. I'm going to save this because I'm going to use it for a tutorial video, which I'll do in a second. So bear with me. Let me go ahead and recap everything else. Um, but I will be doing some training on Cloyster. That's for sure. Uh, battery, still good to go. And let's go ahead and grab our daily grind PM tickets. Decorations will come into play as well, as well as box expansions. Okay, so we're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and start like a little quick video guide for you guys, for those of you tuning in. So bear with me here. And let's go ahead and get straight into this. What's up, everyone? For the one attached you here, you know what it is. Thank you all very much for tuning in to Pokemon Quest. And uh, this is the mobile version. Um, it is very pretty much the same when it comes to the Nintendo Switch version, which I hope to switch over to, no pun intended, very soon. Because now I can stream back on my PC, and I have my Nintendo Switch connected to my PC. However, I wanted to make this guide because all the videos I have done so far on Pokemon Quest have been on the mobile device, and most people do play Pokemon Quest on the mobile device when they're on the go. So without further ado, let's go ahead and open up the user interface. This is a user interface guide for those of you who don't read my goddamn titles. But other than that, uh, as you guys can see on the top left behind where it says live with one person viewing, sadly, uh, you got the location that you're currently at. And mine currently says base camp. And if you were to click on the bottom right hand side, that'll take you to another location, which is called expeditions. Let's go ahead and head back over to base camp. Below that, you'll also be able to find your expedition bonus, and what this is, is every 10 odd expeditions that you do, uh, you will be given a little po uh, point in your experience bar, which you guys can see I have three more points to go ahead and do, three more expeditions to do, and then once that has been filled up, you will be automatically given a legendary gem, which I will be talking about in a later video, um, and how that works and stuff, but you'll be given a legendary gem for completing an expedition, that's your expedition bonus. On the top right hand side, you have your Pokemart, which you can go ahead and click on, which will go ahead and toggle things like your daily PM tickets that you can receive, additional content that you can purchase with real money, decorations that you can purchase, which I'll be going over in a different video, as well as box expansions, which increases uh, Pokemon storage and gems or stone storage. Next up, you got to the left of that, your battery, which I currently have 6 out of 6, it is full, that means I can do 6 total expeditions, and you have to spend PM tickets to recharge it, however it does recharge every 30 minutes. Next up, bottom left, you got decorations, these are the decorations that I've currently already purchased, and you can go ahead and click on them, put them anywhere in your base camp, and I will be going over that and how to do that in a different video. Bottom, super bottom left now, uh, you got your actual options. Next up, you have your, to the right of options, uh, your current quest, which goes ahead and shows you uh, the main quest that you can do, as well, uh, which are your main achievements to do, and basically challenges, for those of you that play like MMORPGs, these are kind of like your dailies, but they're not really dailies, they last forever, they're just things that you can just keep redoing over and over. They do get a little bit more difficult every single time you complete it, until there's a max out. Next up, on the middle, you got your whole table pamphlet of your current Pokemon. So how this works is you'll have a red, green, and blue square, which are the three Pokemon that you can currently have in your party. I currently have two, which is Florian and Pikachu, which is I'm doing something related to only those two guys. Um, above that, you have a number that says for me, 2,708. That is my current Pokemon team score with my Florian and Pikachu currently in it. And if you want, go ahead and click on edit team, which will toggle pretty much everything that you need to do for uh, your Pokemon Quest team. Here you'll notice where it says on the top left, edit team. I've got currently a close range team because I'm currently using Pikachu and Flareon. Um, basically, you can go ahead and click on that. And it'll bring up details on the current Pokemon that are with your team. You can check out their movesets and all that type of stuff in their gems. Um, you'll also see your team total score, which it does show for me, 2,708. And then, of course, the red, green, and blue square, which uh, go ahead and toggle with me the, uh, the actual Pokemon that are currently in the party. However, you can go ahead and drag those Pokemon to your Pokemon box or drag them back to your team. Next up, if you click on any of the Pokemon, whether they're in your box or in your party, uh, it'll go ahead and show you their level, their HP, and their attack. Uh, whether they are close range, which you can see Rapidash has the close range uh, icon to the right of HP and attack. And then if I went to shelter, it has a long range uh, icon to that. On the top right hand side, it shows you a color, like a little bubble, that shows you their typing. 
Shelter is blue, meaning water. Rapidash is an orangish red, which means fire. Um, Alakazam, it has a pink, which means psychic, and so on and so forth. As you guys can see to the right of Shelter, which is this level 36 thingy over here, um, you'll notice that it says 7 out of 20. That means my box is currently 7 Pokemon full out of the max of 20. And again, Pokemart, you can go ahead and increase that. Uh, below that, um, you can either post it by level, or by newest, or by HP, or by attack. And uh, I currently have it set to level because that's just the easiest way for me to recognize which Pokemon I'm currently using and what, uh, which Pokemon I currently want. Um, bottom right and left arrows in your boxes means that you can toggle from box to box, but I don't have any extra boxes. I'm currently only using one. Uh, of course, the bottom right, there's a return arrow, which means it'll return you back to your base camp. And then uh, let's go ahead and get back into that because we're still not completely done here. And then last but not least, you can, well, there's actually not last but not least, there's two more things that you can do here. Go ahead and let's click on, let's say Flareon. I can go ahead and click on training. And you can do multiple things here. I'm not going to go into complete details. That's another video. But let's say I wanted to use Flareon for some training. I can go ahead and drag some Pokemon that I really don't want into the, um, and you cannot use a support Pokemon. In this case, I uh, currently have Pikachu on my team. Put all the Pokemon that you want in the supporting Pokemon air location, which are the Pokemon that you'll be getting rid of. I'm not going to go into the details, but you can currently level up your Pokemon or use move learning. So either or. Let's go ahead and get back out of there. Last but not least that you can do with your edit team is power charms. These are absolutely important into the game of Pokemon Quest. So let's go ahead and check out this. Interface, as you guys can see, I'm currently toggled onto Flareon. Shows the level, the HP, the attack, and it currently shows that it's a melee Pokemon. Um, I have two moves, takedown and flamethrower. And all of these to the uh, bottom of that, these are little gems that you get from completing expeditions. And they basically boost up HP as a sturdy stone or attack as of a mighty stone. And some of them have little um, extra perks such as healing or HP upon recovery and on so forth. Um, as you guys can see, I currently have a ton of stones already being used, and uh, I currently have 22 out of the 40 slots. I did purchase an extra spacing for these stones, and uh, basically, that's all the stones that I currently have. You can use auto set, which would auto set specific stones to specific Pokemon. Um, it's exactly if you wanted to uh, um, remove a Pokemon from your party, just grab a stone, add it to the... Um, Add it to the box, or you can drag that back onto play. And of course, it also shows which Pokemon currently has each and every single given stone. Now, there's stones also used for moves, such as Weightless Stone, Whack Whack Stone, Broadburst Stone, Scatter Shot Stone, and so forth. You can put these ones in the actual move slots of specific moves to go ahead and basically, let's say, for example, which is currently what I've got for Flamethrower, move wait time percent is in decreased by, point, uh, by 5.0. I can either toggle on or off an Everstone. So it's currently now toggled on, which you guys can see on the right hand side up towards the upper right hand side. Um, Everstone, when it's toggled on, allows none of your Pokemon to evolve. I keep it off because I want my Pokemon to evolve. I don't see why you wouldn't. Um, I can go into complete details by clicking up on that magnifying glass on my Pokemon here. And then uh, you can also toggle your gems by strength, HP, attack, move, new, and so on and so forth. You can auto set, like I said earlier, or you can recycle gems. Recycling, pretty much, you'll turn that on. You can go ahead and click on a gem, recycle it, and you'll be given cooking reagents. And that is pretty much it for editing your team. Next up, you have your expedition toggling. But before we get into that, I'm just basically going to show you my campsite or my base camp. Uh, basically, I have a bunch of decorations set up around my base camp here. And then in the middle, we have a cooking pot, which gives us uh, or basically attracts Pokemon to my base camp. You can do a basic cooking pot, bronze cooking pot, silver cooking pot, and there is also more difficult cooking pots that I have yet to unlock. And what that means is it needs requires more ingredients in order to cook, which I'll be doing in a different video, so stay tuned for that. And last but not least, let's go ahead and hit up Expeditions. 
and this is where you actually play the game. So over here, toggle to the left, you can see Expedition 1, which is first step, which I have completed all of them. And uh, basically the ones with the Pokeballs are all the ones that I've completed. And then the ones over here that you guys can see, they have like Boss Boss 9-5, 10-4. Those are the ones that I'm currently working on. Let's go ahead and use this last one. As you guys can see, my current team is 2,708. The current recommendation for 10-4 is 12,100. Now if I was using my full team, I'm probably roughly around 6,000 to 7,000. But it's a recommendation if you're decently good at the game, you can sometimes exceed expectations in this game. So do not worry about that. And there's also bonus typing and stuff like that. So that's pretty much it for your user interface guide. Thank you all very much for tuning in. Catch you guys in the next episode. Peace. What's up, Zan? What's up, Claude? Thank you very much for tuning in. We're going to go ahead and get into today's episode. Go ahead and grab my PM tickets. Um, yeah, let me go ahead and just check out everything before we get started into some expeditions. It's been a lot while since I've played this game. Decorations, Gucci. Options. Gucci. Going to be playing Magikarp Jump after this. Uh, this stream, I'm going to be restarting the whole thing again. Don't worry, I know I've done this multiple times, but this time is the last time I will do it. I still need to farm, uh... It's been a while since I've played, so that's kind of why I'm restarting. Don't really remember where I left off. I could just go look at my latest video, but a bit too lazy. Um... Oh yeah, I need to train my shelter into Cloyster. My bad. If I can learn Ice Beam, that would be so juice. You know, I gotta bring back my high school, my high school words. So zang, fam. So freaking zang. Imagine if I got rid of Withdraw. Alright, start training my Jeep. 100% chance of... <laughs> That's so sad. Alright, so what do you learn? What is that? Icicle Crash. That's cool. I'm assuming they were put back into my thing. But Icicle Crash, that's actually pretty cool. Let's go check out what that move actually does. Alright. Go to Power Charms. Icicle Crash was the second move that I was down for. The user drops Frigid Icicles to front of it, in front of itself. Deals damage to enemies hit by them and sometimes free. That's actually really, really good. Um, wait time on that is 5 with a 143 attack. Um, it can freeze enemies, which is the main part. The damage I don't care about. Number of move repetitions. Perfecto. And number of shots. Nice. Because the more chances you have of freezing, the better. So that is absolutely a perfect setup for Cloyster right now. That's great move setup. It can freeze, it can defend, it can stun, all that cool stuff. That's exactly what Cloyster needed. So Cloyster is completely set up and good to go. I didn't know Icicle Crash did that. I didn't even know what it did, to be honest. Um, let me go ahead and bring that page back up really quick. Just to make sure I wasn't missing out on anything. I think I'd rather that over Ice Beam. Because Ice Beam is I mean, Ice Beam's kind of an AoE, so... Barrier, Ice Beam, Icicle Clash, Icy Wind, Supersonic, Rock, I mean, pretty pretty, pretty damn good move set right there. Alright, I'm going to keep that. Perfect. I'm not going to focus too much on it. Barrier would be great because of tanking capabilities, but I'll keep it that way for now. Um, Flareon and Alakazam are still the ones that I'm trying to train up right now. But we're going to keep uh, Pikachu and Flareon on the team. Decorations, can I purchase anything? So three, 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 five, two. Okay, so two's next. Charmander flag. Perfect. Need 80 more. Can I cook at all? Like, how far am I from cooking? Auto set. I can cook. Okay, perfect. And this is all small ingredients, so this should be quickly done. And three expeditions. Nice. So let's go. Expedition grand. Alright. Expedition 1. Y'all know what's up. Alright, everybody. Expedition 1. First step. Bonus typing of fighting. Without further ado, let's go ahead and smash. 
that 1-1 to get into uh, level 1 of Expedition 1. And we're just going to quickly get through this because I'm using a level 42 Flareon as well as a level 21 Pikachu. Main reason for me doing this expedition and recapping it is to show you guys the expedition for those of you that have yet to seen it on my channel. And also to make a video about Expedition 1 and all of its levels and glory. And the main reason is to farm cooking ingredients because I'm running low on those things and they're really important for me leveling up and continuing on with my Pokemon Quest adventures in order to get through Expedition 10, 9, 8, and 7. And Flurion, I don't know what you're doing over there casting Flamethrower to nothing, but it's all good. Pikachu can solo with its Thunder Shock abilities. And for some reason it uses Surf against Flying types, but that's okay. That's how Pikachu rolls. But again, for those of you tuning in, thank you all very much for tuning in. Got questions, post in the comment section down below. I will be doing a video for every expedition and adding all of their levels into the same video. So, once I've completed an expedition, I will make sure I can go ahead and get back into it by re-completing it as quickly as possible and uh, showing you guys all of that expedition's glory. Just completed the first boss for Expedition 1, level 1, and that was a Meowth. So, Sage has been officially cleared. Got some uh, cooking regions, I hope. XP is going to be pretty much null onto this because my Pokemon are a little bit too high. But again, cooking ingredients in full, which is kind of what I'm here for. Next up, Expedition 1, level 2, 650. Let's go ahead and get straight into this. Kind of forget... And it's also cool to go back to these expeditions, but I kind of forget what all the bosses were in these old school expeditions. Now, I don't even remember seeing a Caterpie back in the day, but anyways, it's all good. Florian's going to quickly squirm through these little guys because, well, she's a fire type and absolutely destroying them, I hope. Even though Pikachu kind of destroyed the, the Weedle for you. But we're getting through this. Two cooking regions already. And it's, uh, it's just so... It's not fair. It's, it's just not fair. I'm, I'm using a level 42 Flareon fam. This is just... This is not cool. Also, for those of you tuning in, this is Expedition 1. Even your starting Pokemon will get through these levels pretty damn quickly. It's kind of like a... A start to your adventures. This game gets a lot more difficult, which is kind of why I'm back on Expedition 1, so I can quickly farm some cooking regions while I am doing this. Uh, looks like boss number 2 is a Kakuna with a bunch of Caterpies. I don't really remember it being this difficult, but as you guys can see, once you have killed the actual boss for that level, there's no requirements on to killing the little small fries. So, that is another level done, and more cooking regions in the bag. Next up, Expedition 1, level 3, 750 total. Now let's get to it again. Cakewalk for me, because my Pokemon are out-leveling this Expedition. Expedition start now as you guys can see on the top right this one actually has four different levels or four different uh, Levels to clear within this level um, Can I say level some more fam? Uh, we've already got a cooking two cooking regions. Oh damn Flareon just hit nothing over here, but it's gonna go ahead and chomp and get a little kill out by that um, I just picked up a cooking regent, but my number didn't go up. That's kind of weird Hope hopefully you're not jipping me over here Pokemon quest because it's kind of only reason why I'm here for it. And that's a little bit OP, Pikachu. We did not need to paralyze the bird. Because uh, bird is not the word at the moment. I believe it's a Pidgeotto. I'm assuming it's a Pidgeotto. Because there's a lot of Pidgeys. A lot of Pidgeys and Spearows in this level. But I'm still assuming it's a Pidgeotto. Because I do remember seeing one. Way back when. When I started this game a long time ago. Ooh, there's a Growlithe. Is that rare to find? Actually, no. I kind of had a Growlithe the first time I played this game. That would have been nice to get an Arcanine, but I'm not. I don't have one because I'm rocking the Flareon, fam. Even though Arcanine's better, I still like Flareon. I'm, I'm, that's how I roll. Damn, Pikachu, you quick as fuck, boys. That Thunder Shock, though, it it should be like an AOE Thunder Shock. Like it should hit anything that's like nearby in front of your face, because. 
I mean, sometimes things conduct electricity. You never know. Uh, yep, called it Pidgeotto and three Pidgeys. I mean, Pikachu should still be able to solo this. Because Flareon just does not want to fight today. But good job to you guys for killing the uh, the Pidgeys first. That was a little bit smarter because that actually gives me an opportunity to get more cooking reagents from this. And now we finish off the boss in 3, 2, 1, poof. That actually would have been a one shot if Flareon just did that in the beginning. Oh, cooking regions on cooking regions. We got a total of 16. That's exactly what I need. I can finally start cooking and attracting some Pokemon to the crew. Last but not least, Expedition 1, Level 4, Boss Mode, 850. Let's get to it. Don't remember what the boss was, but this is the last level of Expedition 1. It's... As you guys can see, it's the same level for every single Expedition. Just the only thing that changes is the Pokemon. We've got a Flying type with two normal type Meowths. And uh, we just smashed through that. So that is clearing of Stage 1. Got Spearow with... That's just it, one Spearow. Alright, but well you about to get one shot, bro. With two more. Got you. Cooking regions on cooking regions. Oh no, four more. They're just spread out, fam. I never noticed this before. Um, again, this is also on auto, so I can't really control my Pokemon that well. That actually just means I can't control my Pokemon at all. I'm letting the game play itself. So I had my Flareon just flamethrowing for nothing. Don't blame, because that's not me doing that. So pretty much just flying type Pokemon, flying and normal type Pokemon in this one. I wonder who the boss is then. I really I really don't remember this one at all. We've already faced off against a Meowth, a Pidgeotto, and a Kakuna. Persian? But I don't remember seeing a Persian at all. Surf would be nice right here. Thank you. See, the computer knows what it's doing. Oh, we're stacking up the cooking regions. This is going to be so good. Oh, oh, we have shit. I forgot. Gems are pointless to me right now. All these. Oh, no. These gems are actually going to turn into cooking regions. Oh, my gosh. I forgot about that. You can recycle your gems, fam. Remember to recycle, fam. We're facing off against Eradicate. Is it a totem Eradicate? Are we doing Pokemon Sun and Moon over here? I don't think so. It doesn't got that red aura effect. Oh, my gosh. Really, Flareon? Did you have to use the flamethrower on the freaking Raditat? Like, was it worth it? Use it on the Raticate. Now. Right now. It's like perfect. You're not going to get knocked back. Thank you. Let's see. That's all we needed. Expedition 1. Completely done in the bag. 15 cooking regions plus all of the uh, recycles of the gems. So sweet. See you guys on into Expedition 2. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Alright, sweet. We got a lot of cooking regions from that. Um... Head on back over to the base camp, cooking done. Got to recycle and see what quests we have completed today. So let's go ahead and edit team. Got to hit up the uh, Flareon, hit up the power charms and recycle all the trash. Get some more cooking regions. This is going to be useful, guys. It's useful for multiple reasons. We need all of that so we can cook and increase the levels and get good moves on the Pokemon that we plan to use in this game. Next up, let's see what quests we have completed. For those of you tuning in, don't be shy. Hit us up in chat. Quests, y'all know what's up. Ooh, normal type investigation, getting the ball mushroom. And last but not least, cooking, let's see what we attracted. Hopefully it's something decent. Again, this is Silver Pot. Water type. Mouth watering dip a la cube XL size. So I did not get the good though. But it's a water type. It's a seal. Hmm. It's a seal. Can you... Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. This is new. It's not a seal. It's a Goldeen. At level 35. Nose takedown and flail. Guess what? Complete shit. I don't want no free.
freaking Goldine that knows take down and flail. Learn some fire moves. I mean, fire moves. Itachi 2018. Goldine, please learn flat fire blast. Like, that's, that's so bad. What is this? I want this golden rainbow shell thing over here in the bottom right. I got zero of them. But anyways, this looks like some lit cooking. Let's go ahead and start it up. Oh man, five expeditions. It must be lit. So, Goldine, can you can I train? Can I do some training over here, fam? Is it worth it? I don't think so, but we shall find out. For some reason, I'll, uh, okay, so you got 48. I'm assuming you got 42. Yeah, fuck you, man. I don't know why. Flareon just gets a less percentage every time. I'm assuming because it's a water type is involved, but I don't know. Back into the expeditions. We are going to do expedition two. But next episode, we will be back into Expedition 2, if you guys know what I mean. I will be doing these again. I'm just doing them just to finish them off and to get a chance at getting more XP and cooking regions. So, I'm not using this for any videos. I like to do a full expedition during every live stream. For video purposes, so it's easier to edit. So, next time I play Pokemon Quest, I will be back at Expedition 2, starting fresh. Still farming Regents, because I, I, I need Pokemon to level up my Pokemon. That's the fastest way to level up in this game, instead of just spamming Expeditions. It's just, you get nowhere doing that way. So, if you can continue to grind Pokemon, and use them for training, that's the fastest way to level up. Also... I'm currently in the process of trying to learn the perfect move sets for my Pokemon. Cloyster is actually very close to a perfect move set, so it knows withdrawal and some icicle clash thing, which is actually really good, so I'm gonna keep it at that. I'm trying to get Flareon to remove takedown, and I'm trying to get uh, Alakazam to I was gonna say Kadabra, yes. I'm trying to get Alakazam to remove, I believe it was um Barrier into what's it called? Or light screen into what's it called? Um, psychic. If you can learn psychic, that that's just that that's cake. We gonna cake it through this game if it learns psychic. But then I need an OP tank, which is Golem. Dream Team is. I mean, I Dream Team would be Flareon, Jolteon, and Vaporeon, but. Sadly, that's not going to happen because they're not good enough to complete this game with unless they're like level 100. Um, dream team for this game are the best three Pokemon in this game or the best Pokemon team in this game. Golem, Alakazam, and you can throw in Arcanine or Machamp. But Golem and Alakazam are guaranteed win-win. Golem's your OP tank that never dies. Alakazam doing damage. And Arcanine... For nasty damage as well, or Machamp for some decent damage with some great team buffs. You can flip flop with Machamp, and uh, I wonder how you evolve. Well, well, I evolved Alakazam in this game, so I was gonna say, how do you evolve Machamp when you can't trade? But I, I've evolved Kadabra into Alakazam, so there's no need to ask that question. Did my Pikachu really die? That's kind of sad. This this Paris don't want nothing with this Flareon right now. It don't want nothing. I remember this. These guys explode, don't they? I wonder if my Flareon will die. Well, I mean, it did one-shot him. <laughs> so they couldn't explode on time anyways. But I wonder if this was the level that they, they could actually explode. That'd be a bit OP to newcomers, because this is only Expedition 2. Like this flan just smashing. Making some scrambled eggs over here, fam. Well, executor's the boss. Flan gonna come in with the flames and uh, 
fire flame spit on this team. Okay, never mind. I'm just gonna bite him up. Executor actually used explosion ish. I don't know what move that is that it uses, but it does a lot of damage. That that right there. Still, I got the win. We're good. All right, let's go grab some more cooking reagents into the bag by recycling the gems. Got a little bit of XP on Pikachu, which was nice. Base camp. Um, edit. Recycle, y'all know what's up. And I don't nope, not out of set sorry. I'm gonna need to recycle two. Yeah, two. Ooh, that got a lot for that. That was nice. That was really good. Well cooking we are kinda set for like two more silver pots, I think. But sadly I got no more charges to my battery. So without further ado, thank you all very much for tuning in. Much appreciated. Love you all. If you want to see some more Pokemon quests, post in the comment section down below, like the video, and of course subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. I can go on and on and say a bunch of things for you to do, but you're probably not going to do it, but if you do want to support us, it's much appreciated. Love you all. For those of you tuning in live, catch you guys in a couple seconds, I'm gonna turn on another Pokemon live stream into Pokemon Magikarp Jump. So catch you guys there. Peace. Have a wonderful day.